neurofeedback was probably the most profound uh, change that I saw in Kyle almost instantly. Like, I would take him in, he was eight, nine years old um, when he was undergoing his first round of neurofeedback treatment, and he had a lot of anxiety, and in 15, 20 minutes of a session, I could just physically watch his anxiety just disappear from his body. Uh, no stimming, he could sit there calmly. It was a huge, huge change. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Stephanie Rimka with Brain and Body Solutions. So, I told you we were going to be doing a live on, oh, this news, Live 19 channel QEEG. This is with my nephew Kyle, and they do live in Michigan. Kyle is turning 20. He turns 20 in a few weeks. Yeah. Right. So, do you remember what you said to me at the Christmas party years ago? Many, many, many years ago? Oh, in regards to neural feedback, I yeah. do. The neurofeedback was probably the most profound uh, change that I saw in Kyle almost instantly. Like, I would take him in, he was eight, nine years old, um, when he was undergoing his first round of neurofeedback treatment, and he had a lot of anxiety, and in 15, 20 minutes of a session, I could just physically watch his anxiety just disappear from his body. Uh, no stimming, he could sit there calmly, it was a huge, huge change. At the time, he was also doing a lot of biomedical interventions. He was on, at one time, 51 supplements a day. Um, and I didn't see nearly the dramatic improvement as I did with the neural feedback, so I turned all my energies into that. And what was the other big piece you did? Changing his diet was very instrumental. Because we had to go after the gut. The gut inflammation was causing continual toxicity and continual brain inflammation. And it took quite a few years for me to get her to go yes. to the full tilt of what I needed her to do. And so, you know, right. Kim really understands the resistance a parent can go through, how hard you think it's going to be, all the emotional reasons, all the excuses, all the fear. And once she finally did it, it was dramatic. In six months, it was a different child. Absolutely different. I mean, nothing short of miraculous. Um, he went from living in his bedroom uh, pretty much all the time. He would only come out to eat when his father, he had problems with his father. So if his father was home, he wouldn't come out of the room. He would sit in his room and eat on the floor. It was an awful time. We even to the point he wouldn't go to the bathroom. and th would, There was a, a time when he wouldn't even come out and use the bathroom. So he had to use it somewhere in his bedroom. He was, yes, peeing in, in a backpack because he thought that was a receptacle the that would, would hold it. Yeah. for him to handle. Right. He was so tormented physically inside and had to go so inside himself he could not interact with the outside world i think the only person he, he was selectively mute for quite some time he was yeah except for you me and his sister mm -hmm. that was it that was his, so she even did the extreme of pulling him out of school completely that was the choice she needed to make right and could do so she could fully control this diet and go after the diet and the neurofeedback the way we needed to, to address it um, and what kind of spawned from that the miraculous thing that her finally saying the statement that was a aha moment boom I'm done how do I learn neurofeedback so people always ask how'd you get into this my sister it's her fault you can blame her <laughs> and what she then, then did with it she didn't become a neurofeedback therapist she went into the health field and she is a massage therapist in Michigan so she's in the greater Detroit area and I'm going to put her contact information in the uh, a comment area how to reach her but she works on particularly anybody any kind of stress anxiety but the mothers and the families of autistic children and what in two nights a week you work on autistic I, I children do. she yes. specializes in working on the, your actual children starting I think a lot with the feet with the reflexology Correct. Right. so she talks to the organ systems and the brain through the feet and getting kids to go from that never have, can be touched to where they now they collapse on the massage table and they run in and can't wait so the, your child who can't be touched who can't hug you suddenly it's like oh yeah and learning to love the touch as she slowly learns to communicate with them through their body to reassess their brain and she also I'm doing all the talking because she's not feeling well um, 
she then said, I'm going to help people with the diet because I know what it's like. It took me five years to really do what you took, what you right. guys kept pieces and pieces. And I'm like, you're not seeing the results because you're not doing the whole thing. If you keep letting things sneak in, you keep doing it, it's not going to work. And then once you do it, it's so much easier. And he became healthy. He doesn't get sick. He doesn't get infections, right? So she's specializing in taking families through the chain. How do you go through in a realistic way with whatever budget you have? And if that means she's got to come into your house and clean out your kitchen and your cupboard, that she's got to go shopping, you can hire her to do all that or just consulting on the simple solutions to kind of make this really work for families, real families, but then how do you help heal your children with the GAPS diet, gluten-free, casein-free, allergies, whatever. From a mom's perspective, from knowing how to shop, whether that's a Myers budget, if you're in Michigan, right, right <laughs> or a Whole Foods budget, or a CSA. She joined a CSA and actually took her kids farming with her, grew their own food right. for years so she could get the, and found the way, how can I afford to get organic food? Because I can't afford to do that the other way so how am I going to do what I can do with what I have that's what she's good at helping you figure out so she took and said okay the diet and the neurofeedback so she does the diet I do the neurofeedback I've been trying to lure my sister down to Atlanta for I don't know a lot of years <laughs> she's not common she's not common but she's got her life and her stuff up in Michigan and she's staying there and my mother's happy because you got her grandbabies but that's what's going on so those are the pieces that we do and I'm going to put the information um, but she's a she's a family coach to help families. She's a, a coach and a consultant for families on the spectrum. Uh, she's also an ILS practitioner. So one of our therapies we do integrated listening therapy. Right. We have that for Kyle as well. So I went ahead and said you need to get fully trained in it so you can help families go through that. So she's got a wealth of information for all you folks in Detroit, and she's got me in her back pocket. So whenever you got a question, you're kind of getting me at the same time because I'm going to help her with every case. That, you know, I help her all the time if she's got a question. Okay. She's not doing functional testing. She's the real life, how do I feed them? GAPS diet coaching, you know, come in and show you all the mistakes you're making. And it's how we've helped take Kyle to a certain place. And now there's been some things in life and things have changed and she went through a divorce and you know, life changed. She had to, couldn't afford to a lot of the stuff he was on for years. It all had to stop. All yeah. supplements stopped. All different types of food things. Still on the diet, but I gotta just, this is what I can afford. Her life has changed now. Now right. we've got some more resources, so we're gonna we're doing a lot of testing on him now. Doing a fresh new map, a lot of labs and urine tests. I'm gonna go over that stuff with her privately, and we're gonna put him on a whole repair, detoxification, healing. So we're gonna upgrade him again, you know, yes. over the next little bit of time. We're gonna go in for you know, he's getting a full sauna. We're gonna detox him in all the ways, and we'll keep you updated. But let's go over to meet Jeff. So you want to say anything else yes, that I miss I'm anything? Good. Else? I'm, okay, that's great. go lay down. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Here. Everybody, this is Jeff. Hello, how are you? Don't lift the big ones, uh, And this is my nephew. Can you say hi, Kyle? We're doing a little video. If you don't, you don't want to, you don't have to. He's good. We'll skip it. We're just going to pause this for a second so we can talk to the camera. Yeah. <laughs> good. Right now, we're putting on what's called a surgical EEG cap. And it's uh, 19 channels of EEG recording uh, where we go ahead and take a look at his brain waves. And it's a, just a regular EEG cap that a neurologist or some surgical person would use. And uh, uh, it's a really simple procedure. We fill each of these holes with a, a, a electro gel, which is uh, inductive. And uh, we fill them up with this blunt edged squirt gun, that's what I call it. And then what I'm doing now is I'm making sure we're getting good contact from each electrode to the scalp with an impedance meter. And I'm just getting the impedance down. So we go through each site and I kind of put the squirt gun in there and I wiggle. And then when my number is suitable, I go on to the next one. And, and as he finishes up with that, let you know, um, I don't forget how long you've been here, but Jeff and I are really, we have a great time. We're a great team. Uh, we have a third neurofeedback therapist that's here uh, part-time as we get full to help handle some of our overflow, Lee Holbrook, and a lot of you are familiar with her from years ago. She's been with me off and on for a long time. Um, she's more of a tech. So Jeff and I are both BCNs. We're both board certified neurofeedback. He also just passed a really big test. 
That's the QEG diplomat test. Yeah, so he's a diplomat now and reading this raw EEG. A lot of people can't do this. Um, I can't do it. He's one of he's one of our little specialists at doing that. One of how many are you guys? How many of there are? It's probably forty or fifty in the country. That's about it. So yeah. um, we do some special stuff here with a lot of experience. The two of us together, we I probably say I think it's averaging about twenty years experience you get with us. Um, if not more at this point. What's really great here is I've worked um, in learning disabled schools and addiction centers and working with Stephanie, this is the first place I've ever worked where we can deal with both what's called soup and sparks. So I'm dealing with the electricity in the brain and Stephanie deals not only with the electricity but with the chemical reactions and the metabolism and the the vitamins, the supplements, the neurotransmitters. So we kind of have both things covered. And when Terry turns the camera on herself, you'll see that we have the third tier in here, which is the <laughs> psychological. So we're kind of a complete brain center now, and it's exciting. Very yeah, exciting. we got a PhD psychologist on board, you know, so we do a lot of stuff. Let me just get it out of your way. This um, is uh, the amplifier that amplifies those brain waves, which are measured in a millionth of a volt. So you can imagine this is what's called a brain master discovery. It's FDA approved medical device, one of only a few. They can actually use it for surgery and for uh, sleep studies and things that are commonly used with EEG. So it's a very um, precise instrument. So I plug that in here and that's how we start recording brain waves. And now I'm going to go over here to our computer and we can take a look at what Kyle's brain looks like via his EEG. This is probably the most modern of softwares out there now. It's called the Brain Master Brain Avatar 1.0, or 4.0 rather, it's the fourth iteration. And all I have to do is hit the go button. And I'll let him have a little bit of nuts right now until you get I, to, I, just a couple. Just a little handful, okay? And then he's going to record in a second. Okay, and here's a picture of Kyle's EEG. If you want to see what the EEG looks like when you eat nuts, Kyle is eating nuts. And that's his brain telling his mouth to chew. So that's a bunch of static and noise. This is why we need people when we do it to be still. Uh -huh. So you really can't be eating or chewing yeah. gum while you're doing this. So after that one, Kyle, we're going to pause you and Jeff's going to check all the signal, okay? So after you swallow this one, we're going to you're going to stop eating, okay? Just hold on. Okay, if you want, let's, um, if you can get him a, a here's a tissue, yeah. and let's just put those over here, Kyle. Just uh, put them here. Awesome. There you go. And we'll just save those for you over here. And if you can be really still, let me see what your EEG looks like. In fact, you could be watching. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here so you can see. Okay. And that's your brain. Go ahead and blink your eyes a few times. That's what your brain looks like when you blink your eyes. Actually, it's something called eye artifact. Go ahead and grit your teeth and growl like a tiger. Go, Grrr. Can you do that, Kyle? Go, Grrr. It hurts my throat. Okay, then we won't do that. Let's uh, see what it looks like when you close your eyes. Close your eyes and pretend like you're sleeping. Don't squeeze them shut, just kind of let them stay closed. Good. Okay, that's excellent. Okay, let me go ahead and fix the ears. The ear reference yeah, is a little bit rough. So. so when we notice things on the raw EG, if things are looking like it's not a good connection, there's muscle tension, um, and so he saw that right away, we're gonna fix it down in that one um, area. Sometimes it vibrates from the pulse of the jugulars. Sometimes it's the cap might be too tight. We have to adjust things. Sometimes people just have a lot of tension and then they're they're clenching their jaws a lot and then we're picking up tension particularly right in these locations uh, off the temporals. 
Um, I think we're going to let you just work, Jeff. Okay, okay, very good. So what he's going to end up doing is recording some eyes closed time and then mm -hmm. recording some eyes open time. Mm -hmm. And then you want to explain just briefly what you do with that information when you're all done? Sure. Once we uh, record the information, we run it through software that analyzes it for it or turns it into brain maps and then spend a couple hours looking it over and comparing it to other databases and making sure there's no seizure activity or any kind of infarcts or tumors or anything like that. And infarcts mean some dead tissue, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. That might happen after a TIA or a stroke. Yeah. All right, okay. we'll let you guys do it. You all right, Kyle? All right. So, we're going to let them do their work. We're going to do our work. If you have any questions, um, you guys can ask me down there. But I'm going to give Kim's information to you because she's up in Metro Detroit. You know, I, I don't forget where, I'm not going to say where she lives and where she works. She works out of, Kim, where, where are you? Like Clinton Township or something? Sterling Heights. Sterling Heights. And Clinton Township. And Clinton Township. See, it's. We're, I'm normal, I'm East Side 313, so some of these new places I get confused at this point. Detroit keeps growing. Um, we're, of course, in Midtown Atlanta, uh, 30307 area code. Um, but that's a, a brain map, and at least part of the process. If it doesn't hurt, we can get anybody to do it. You know, we've had three-year-olds on the spectrum. It takes a little bit more work, we've, uh, but, but we can do it. It might take a few visits to get them feeling comfortable in here. Um, that's about it. So a lot of people want to know what we do, why to get into it. This is why I got into it. And this is why my sister does what she does. It's why I do what I do. Um, and uh, we have a great time with it. So that's one part of what the office does, what neurotherapies and how we assess that information, getting this kind of baseline. Because Kyle isn't going to train here. They don't live here. But we are getting a big baseline kind of where he is right now um, to a, his therapist that his main neurofeedback therapist, one, unfortunately, um, Mary St. Clair, she did pass away. And Dr. Brown is has kind of moved far away and is kind of part-time up in Michigan. So we got to find him a place that I think is really qualified up in, near them, but he'll have this baseline information. Plus, I can get all this metabolic information. I'll just, you can you can flip it if you want me to get close the door. So, so I can use this information to help assess what I need to do and what kind of tests I need to order to find out all his metabolic function. So some people just come in and we do a big intake and I get this and they aren't going to train. Uh, we're going to, they're more of a metabolic candidate and I can tell that when I look at the map. And some people, I've heard many neurofeedback therapists, they just train everybody all the time, no matter what. And it's been a little bit shocking to me. We'll refer to somebody, they did refer somebody to a diplomat in neurology, a chiropractor, and that was the take of, well, everybody does neurofeedback. And we're like, why would you do that? Because I can tell you that kid's brain isn't going to respond because they're so low powered, they're so malnourished, they're in such a major um, hormone, an endocrine disruption. I need to go in there and look at that hypothalamus and that pituitary and the entire chain of what's going on before to set them up so the neural feedback is successful. It, it's like I wouldn't, if somebody came to me who was anorexic, I don't start training them for um, a Tough mutter race. I have to feed them. I have to replenish them and that would start foundationally. I don't make them do more work. I build them before I start adding muscle, right? So the brain is kind of similar. I have to see, is this going to be, what's the best way to take them? Sometimes we just go ahead and we do both. Sometimes I go, oh no, I have to have that thyroid disorder handled first because the alpha will not respond to that. And it seems like a lot of people don't address that part. And it's why it's kind of a hit or miss. I like this to make sure um, I'm as successful with, with you as possible because people walking out of here telling everybody how much better they feel, how much better their kids are doing, how they're off their medication, how they sleep better, how they don't have panic attacks anymore. That's my commercial. So I make sure we're, we're going to set you up to be, to be well. But this is just a baseline and we do this a lot of times pre and post on um, athletes. So if your kid's playing football, uh, particularly high school and college, getting a baseline um, map pre-season so we have it so we see what it is so if they get a concussion we can do one immediately after and see what's going on and help them with the post-concussive suggestions on diet and what to do 
and then within a month or so we might need to train them. But it's a great thing and we offer that at a very discounted rate for uh, football teams. Jeff is dying to get a whole high school team. I mean, he's, we would love to have a whole pre-team. And so concussions are a real big problem in sports right now. Girls soccer is a second leading, so boys football in America and then girls soccer are the most number of concussions. It's bad. So this is a really great tool to see. What do they look like before? What happens in that concussion, that brain inflammation, that dead brain tissue? And then uh, how quickly are they recovering? And are they going to need neurofeedback after that? We don't even start the neurofeedback. Usually it's four to six weeks after. We have to let all that swelling go down. But we go in there with nutrition, very specific nutrition information to help prevent as much um, crisis and energy it's a it's a Christ energy crisis situation when you bruise your brain and we have to get the right things in there so things don't die but anyway that's an aside so it's, that's a lot of stuff that the QEGs are used for peak performance people just want to be better getting a better IQ be calmer solving a problem um, making more connections so we're gonna see what Kyle's doing and how I can best help him and direct the therapist up in Michigan to do you know what we think uh, would be the most helpful All right so I'll put info in the comments and you guys have a great Saturday.